everyone, this is Katie Jacobson, the internet marketing strategist, and for today's video, we are going to have story time. I have been reading Ender in Exile. It's a science fiction book. It's part of a series of at least 10 or 11 books in the Ender universe. And I've realized as I've been reading Ender in Exile that there is a common theme about leadership throughout all the books. Um, it's the way that Ender acts as a leader and how he is so effective as a leader. And so I wanted to read you a couple of quick excerpts from the book. And like I said, there's 11 books in this series, so that I, I hope that you can get the gist of, of what I'm trying to share here just by these short excerpts. Um, briefly, Ender, at the time of this book, is a 15-year-old boy and he has been chosen to be the governor of a colony. This is a planet that's light years away from Earth, but it's populated by humans from Earth that came 40 years earlier when they were part of a military attack against the original inhabitants of the planet. And Ender was one of the commanders that led those, those attacks, but he led them virtually, and he didn't even actually know that he was leading a real invasion. He thought he was playing a video game. So there were real humans fighting. Ender was their leader. And after they had done the attacks, they stayed on the planet light years away. Ender eventually traveled to that planet, but because of the relativistic effects of time and space, they've been there for 40 years, governing themselves and taking care of themselves. And Ender has only aged about two years. And so he's a 15 year old boy heading off to be the governor of a colony of people who have been on their own without a governor for 40 years. And the, um, the commander of the ship that Ender is traveling on wants to be the governor. And he thinks that he's going to take over from Ender. And turns out that Ender has something up his sleeve that this other man can never have. And this is what I want you to learn about leadership from Ender. Um, Ender spends the entire voyage studying the people that he'll be leading and governing on this colony. And when he gets to the colony, he's able to take control away from the other man by talking to people. And he goes up to them and he recognizes every single one of them from pictures and he calls them by name. Um, he immediately starts singling out the veterans that he fought with in battle 40 years earlier. He cites the names of all those soldiers who died in the war. And then he lists off again, from memory, names of the people that died when the colony was young and struggling. Okay, here we go. The, the crowd was cheering. They had been cheering and clapping over and over again while Morgan read the letter. Morgan is the man that wants to take control over um, from the boy. He looked out to see that they were now completely surrounding Wigan, that's the boy, Ender Wigan, none of them even glancing at the shuttle at the ramp at Admiral Morgan. Now that he was looking at them, he could see that everyone was gazing intently at Ender Wigan, devotedly, eagerly. Every word he said, they cheered at or laughed or wept. Incredibly, they loved him. Morgan lost this power struggle from the moment Ender Wigan appeared in full uniform and called the veterans by name and invoked their memories of the dead. Wigan knew how to win their hearts, and he did it without deception or coercion. All he did was care enough to learn their names and faces and remember them. Okay? And then again, a little bit later in the book, Ender, again, Ender's the 15-year-old boy, the leader of this colony, the governor, and he is talking to an 11-year-old boy who's a mechanical genius named Abra. Leading is a strange thing, said Ender. People see it happening, but they don't have a clue how it works. I know, said Abra. Most people are like that with machines, but they try to fix them anyway and make everything worse. So you understand exactly, said Ender. They don't see what a leader does. They just see how everybody respects a good leader, and they want to have the attention and respect without understanding what you actually have to do to earn it. Everybody, everybody respects you, said Abra. And yet I do almost nothing, said Ender. Um, leading this colony is too easy to be a full-time job. 
easy for you, said Abra. I suppose, said Ender, and right here is the point I want you to listen to. But then, even when I'm doing other jobs, I'm still doing my job as governor because I'm always getting to know people. You can't lead people you don't know or at least understand. In war, for instance, if you don't know what your soldiers can do, how can you lead them into battle and hope to succeed? The enemy, too. You have to know the enemy. Okay, so throughout this whole book, Ender is a revered, loved, and cherished leader because he knows and loves his people. And in your business, to truly be the effective business owner that you're meant to be and to truly get your message out to the world, you must know and even love your customers and your clients. In order to market to them effectively so that your message can reach them, you must know what will interest them, what will move them, what their fears are, what their concerns are. So that's the lesson I'd like you to learn from Ender, is to be a good leader, to be a good business person, you must know and love people. You must know and love your clients, your customers, to be able to market to them and to be able to reach them with your message that is so important for you to get out there. I want you to go ahead and click on the link below and that will take you to my blog. If you're already on my blog, you can go ahead and click on the banner at the top of the page to get my free audiobook. And I would love to hear from you. Thanks.